This is a bamboo rolling mat. These are beautiful. They're very cheap, but again, Miss Tara's frugal, if you look up that word, okay? Frugal, frugal, frugal. I like to keep things for as long as I possibly can. I don't like to waste things. So if you were just to use this by itself, without any wrapping, the string would get dirty, the wood would get dirty, and you pretty much have to throw it away at each and every time. And that's like, you know, that's like two, one to two dollars there. So you're gonna take um, saran wrap. My favorite thing though is this new stuff on the market called press and seal. This stuff is wonderful. And my, a friend of mine's husband was actually on the engineering team that developed this product. So you just pull this out because it's easier to work with than saran wrap. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna pull it out, get a good wrench. There you go, rip it. And you're gonna coat this whole thing with saran wrap. Bamboo mat. And this way, if you have to, at the end of your session, you can just tear it off and everything's clean. But you could also, if you're doing a lot of sushi for a couple days in a row or something, you can actually roll this covered in plastic um, bamboo mat, roll it up and put it in a Ziploc bag and put it right into your refrigerator because it will not go bad until the next day. And then you have to make sure to, you know, you could probably get away with doing that, you know, for one, for two sessions. Like if I had another class tomorrow, I would roll this whole thing up today after I wiped it off a little bit and put it right in my refrigerator, just like this. And it'll be good for the next day in a Ziploc bag. And then the next day I would clean it. Okay, this right here is called Sushi Nori. I buy the one with a 100, 100 pack. All right, can you guys see that, right? There's a light shining up, there we go. Okay, so I always buy the bigger pack and it's vacuum sealed um, for freshness because I do a lot of, I make a lot of sushi with kids. All right, so we're just about ready to start assembling. All right, so first we're gonna do the traditional sushi. I'm gonna pull some out, sushi rolls. All right, good. And if you, um, so if you analyze this later, these pieces have a, a shiny side and a dark, and a textural side. So there's a textural side right there. And there's a shiny, smoother side right there. You can use whatever side you want on the outside. I prefer um, the textural side on the outside because I think it's pretty. But... I think that most sushi chefs and sushi I've eaten show the shiny side on the outside. So we'll do what they do. We'll put the shiny side on the outside. Now, according to that video, which I didn't know this, you could actually, you're supposed to cut these in half. And I'm gonna try to do it. I usually use the whole thing, but we're gonna try to do it the way that they say. I'm gonna do it this way. And I see that there's nice little lines on there too, which is nice. That might help guide. I'm gonna just cut this almost in half. Maybe it's uh, three fifths. So we're gonna use three fifths. And we're gonna save these other two fifths for the next one. Okay. So let's prepare our rice first. We'll set this to the side. Okay, this rice is a little hot, and that's all right. We're gonna cool it down by doing something that is in the video, and I, and I always forget to do this with the kids at schools, but this is one of the things you'll probably learn about if you become a um, Japanese sushi chef apprentice, and they make you work on rice for like a whole year. You take some rice vinegar, and you're gonna add a little bit of rice vinegar, just a little dribble, because rice actually has a flavor to it, and sushi, you can taste a little bit of that vinegar. And you're going to chop through the rice with the vinegar. You're just going to chop it and you're going to fold it over a little bit. You're not going to become aggressive. You're not going to take this rice paddle and smash the rice 
or go like this or stir it. You're just going to sort of fold it up, chop it through just like that. So you can get that nice little vinegar. This vinegar is lightly seasoned. So it's, it's got some sugar and some salt in it. It's just a very mild vinegar, nice and gentle. Um, you don't want to use too much, just a little bit. I would say for this amount of rice, this is probably like a cup and a half here, or maybe this is closer to a cup and a quarter. I'd probably say like a, a, tab a tablespoon or two of the, of the rice vinegar, or maybe even one tablespoon. All right, so that's chopped up, ready to start. All right, good. All right. Put the rice off to the side for, you will put the water bowl to the side. That'll be good. Okay. We're gonna bring up our sushi roll like this. What time is it? Oh, making excellent time. Okay, so I'm gonna put the shiny side down. All right, we're gonna do two kinds of rolls for you guys. One with rice on the outside, one with rice on the inside. So we're gonna put the rice on the inside one here and we're gonna put some rice on it, but we're not gonna cover the whole thing. We're gonna cover about two thirds of it. And as Americans, I know, all, and also with experience, I've seen children, kids, teenagers do this. They will try to put two inches of rice there. No. You have to remember that this is going to compound. As you roll it, the thickness is going to increase because you're rolling it. Does that make sense? So you don't want to put too much rice on there. If you put two inches of rice on there, you're not going to be able to get it closed. Okay. All right. So there we go. Got two thirds of the rice there. Okay. So the open end right here. The end that doesn't have as much rice on it is the one facing away from you right here, okay? So I have like this much rice and maybe like an inch there that doesn't have any rice. All right, so I'm gonna start adding things to this. First, I'm gonna put my rice seasoning. And I wanna use the kimchi one. Like I said, I just want a little bit. I don't want a whole lot, just a little bit, okay. And then I'm gonna put, start with uh, textures. I go from hard to soft. So I put the harder texture in here, carrot. And all of the, the, the food stuffs that go in sushi, I'm gonna start it to, closer to me, okay? Oh, another important thing. A lot of times sushi will not be like 10 ingredients in there. A lot of times it'll just be like two or maybe three at the most. So I have carrot there. I'm gonna put cucumber. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna put four things. And I'm gonna put my protein. Uh, for this one, I wanna use avocado, okay? So I'm gonna put, all, this is a vegetarian one, more or less. Not vegan, but vegetarian. So I'm gonna put some avocado in there, cucumber and carrot. And then um, one little bit of cream cheese. So I'm gonna take two butter knives like this. You take two knives. You get some cream cheese on one knife, you push it off with the other knife. This is the easiest way to work with cream cheese. I've seen kids try to do this with spoons. Doesn't work. Just a little dab will do ya. Three little dabs. I suppose there's fancy ways of dealing with cream cheese. Like I think you can harden it and try slicing it, but Oh, that seems a little, there you go. Not necessary. All right, now we're gonna wrap it. So I'm gonna take my, this mat, again, is just a tool, okay? Can you all see? Um, this is just a tool. So I'm gonna pull it up. There, I'm not gonna pull it, because if you pull it, it's gonna tear. So you wanna just sort of you pick up the mat. You wanna use your fingers a little bit to kind of hold everything together. At first, you're not gonna roll the mat. You're not gonna roll the mat into the thing. You're just gonna use the mat to move everything. Once you get it over the top like this, okay, whoops, some come out. This is why I wasn't sure about using the smaller piece. The next one, we're gonna use the whole piece. 
And then you're gonna try to chop that all in. And give it all a good squeeze, okay? When it gets all the way over, you just give this a squeeze. Now, see I have rice on my fingers? I'm gonna take my rice fingers and dip them in the water. Comes right off. Now I'm gonna, un oops, see, see. Okay, that's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna roll this out. So because I used a smaller bit of seaweed, it sort of came out on the other end a little bit, but on the next one, it'll be better. I'm not gonna do that small thing. So we're gonna pretend that that didn't come out there and roll it over like that. And that is your seaweed roll. Can you all see this? This is your first roll. And then you're gonna take your serrated knife just like this. And you're gonna very gently, I use two fingers right here, put the knife between the two fingers, and I'm just gonna very gently do a sawing action. And just do some nice size rolls. Don't get too skinny. You want these to be like uh, three quarters of an inch maybe. We're taking our time and doing things right today. So that doesn't mean that we're not gonna get to, we might not get to all the different versions because it's important again to just do things correctly, and not rush. Okay, good. That's beautiful. Now what I'm gonna do is take my serving dish right here. Oh, let's get, let's get a little fancier. Let's get a little fancier. We'll take our serving dish here. This is where I'm gonna put my soy sauce and my wasabi, which I forgot to get out of the fridge. Oh, I'm gonna get out in a minute. I'm gonna put some sea grapes over here on this side, I have some cool cucumber here. Food is all about presentation, folks. So beautiful, okay. Now we're gonna take our soy sauce. Wasabi. Soy sauce and wasabi. I buy my wasabi in a tube. In Japan or in Korea, they grind their own wasabi. Wasabi is a horseradish root. So they actually take the root and they grind it against a ceramic plate that has like lines on it that are hard clay. It becomes, um, sorry. These things are so hard to get open. Yeah? Yes, Patrick's gonna open that for me. Okay, so we're gonna put our soy sauce here. Did you get it? Wow. Just a little bit of soy sauce. We don't need a lot. And a lot of different sushis don't require you to do use soy sauce. So I put a little bit of my soy sauce right here in the corner. But you can actually eat it with soy sauce or with just wasabi. And then what I'm going to do, this is fun. We're gonna take this spoon. So usually I would use a chopstick actually, not a spoon. Right here we have our lightsaber chopsticks. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. Um, but they light up just like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, see? And remember, I, I'm not sure if I gave you guys the chopstick lesson, but the chopstick lesson is you just move the top chopstick with your top fingers right there, and the bottom chopstick never moves. I'll give you another chopstick lesson later. So you take your chopsticks and you mix this up, the soy sauce right into the, no, the wasabi into the soy sauce a little bit. And that's a very nice sauce. And then you're gonna take this, we'll put this to the side here. And then presentation, because I'm a ceramic artist, I don't know if I told you guys this, I'm a potter. I'm gonna take my ceramic tile sushi plate and I'm going to put the sushi on this tile in different ways to make it look beautiful. Well this is not going to look as beautiful as it usually does because it has an open seam. We're going to pretend and hide it a little bit. There we go. There we go. I'm put some of her hooks. That one did not come apart. Okay good enough. And then like this. And maybe I'll put this one like this. So when you go out to Asian restaurants, you'll see that they um, do all sorts of um, presentations. They use all kinds of plates. That's the fun thing about Asian food. 
Okay. So here is your sushi, right? So you can use chopsticks to eat it. Uh, uh, like this, and you can dip it in your sauce. Chopstick. You can dip it in your sauce like this. And eat it. Mmm. Good.